Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of The Bandsaw Life. Now, today I want to show you how to convert from ceramic guides on a Laguna saw to Carter guides. If you're tired of going through blades or having to use expensive blades because you have ceramic guides, Carter guides are definitely the answer. And the other nice thing about Carter guides, once you set them, there's no readjusting them other than if you change blade sizes. But other than that, they are absolutely constant. Your blades will last a lot longer because they're bearings, not friction, and you'll be a lot happier. So that being said, let's get started. First thing I want to do is we'll just rotate this saw around. We're going to take this fence off. Just slide that forward. And we'll slide the bracket off. Now, we've got to take that table insert out. And don't forget your table leveling pin. We'll open that saw up. Take the tension off. Don't forget your dust. Now, the easiest thing to do is to get rid of that table. I know you don't want to have to do this every time, but it makes it a whole lot easier if you'll just take these handles off. And as you can see, this style handle, if you push up, you can rotate that nut so that you can take it off, especially on that back unit. And then the table just lifts off and out of the way. Now, this is one of the easier saws to retrofit with Carter guides. Just loosen that bolt right here on the side and then loosen the lever. Well, then you can slide the post out the back and those guides come right off. The bottom is fairly easy as well. We'll just take these two knobs off, and then the whole unit is right out of the way. Clean that up just a little bit. Now, the Carter guides are about as simple as it gets to reinstall. You can see it's just got a simple bracket here. We're going to remove that bracket from the guides themselves with an eighth inch Allen wrench. Set those guides off to the side. The kit comes with two Allen head bolts. So again, you don't have to worry about them loosening or moving when you're pushing larger stuff through. We'll just put those, get those started. Those are a 530 seconds. Now, we're going to snug those down but not tighten them up yet because we need to align that lower brack or those lower guides to the blade. So we're just going to slide that right back into place. Pretty much the lower guides are already installed. There's not much to that. Now the upper guides are just as easy. We can slide our bracket in and then simply attach those guides to the bracket. 
Now, you've got a guard here, which kind of gets in the way, so you need to slide it in from the back and then slide those guides into place. But remember, with the upper post, you can see it's an offset. So as you rotate it, it actually aligns the guides side to side and top to bottom. So slide that in, slide our guides in again. We're not going to tighten that up yet because we need to install our blade so we can adjust the guides to the blade. But basically, the guides are already installed. That's how easy it is to install Carter guides on this saw. So we'll open this back up. We'll install our blade. Now again, when you install your blade, Make sure that you install it so that the deepest part of the gullet is in the center of the wheel. If you put the blade in the middle, all you're going to do is give it a pivot point. You want to back it up so that the deepest part of the gullet, and for those of you sure what the gullet is, the gullet is the deepest part of the tooth. That's the space in between the teeth. Okay. We'll put just a little bit of tension on that blade. Again, don't tension it up all the way. Rotate it so that you're sure that it aligns and doesn't bend or tweak that blade. And then bring up the tension. Now, this could use just a little adjustment so that we get the blade back on the wheel. Again, deepest part of the gullet, center of the wheel. Now we've got our blade adjusted and in place. Next, we need to adjust our guides. All right, now... It's really simple to adjust these guides to the blade. Now that we've got it installed and the tension is set properly, what I want to do is I want to corrupt all these guides so that they're all open and everything is out of the way. Do the same thing to the back. Thrust bearing here. Same thing to the bottom. And then we'll open up these side guides on the bottom as well. You want to make sure that you're adjusting it to the blade because if you push that blade over, it's just going to cause it to drift. Now, the other thing you'll notice is I keep all my wrenches right here on the saw. I use just a simple little rare earth magnet. You can buy these at Lowe's or Home Depot or Harbor Freight. Just stick them on your saw. That way, you always have access to your wrenches. Now, first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that the bearing, the back bearing, is in line with the blade. All right, now the way that we do that is we loosen up the guide on the post, loosen the post, and rotate the post so that it is in line with the thrust bearing. Dead in line with it, and we'll lock it into place. Now you may have to re-loosen it just to bring it up so that the side guides are just behind the deepest part of the gullet. Remember, your tooth set begins at the gullet. So if you bring those side guides into the gullet, all you're going to do is flatten those teeth out, forming a knife edge, and then it will seek the easiest route through the wood. So we've got our top adjusted. We'll do the same thing down here to the bottom. We we'll use that eighth inch blade or eighth inch wrench to loosen that so that we can bring it up to where the side guides are just behind the deepest part of the gullet. All right, now on the bottom here, we just simply loosen up our post with our 5 30 seconds, and we can bring those side guides up to where they're just behind the deepest part of the gullet. Make sure they're in a line. Then, in order to align that back thrust bearing, we loosen up these 
bolts that we installed but didn't tighten and we move that to the side to line up our thrust bearing to where it's in line right with the middle. The blade is right in the middle of that thrust bearing. Now we can snug those down. And then last, make sure that we've tightened the post and the guide on the post as well. Now, we want to adjust our thrust bearing as close as possible without it touching or turning until we begin to cut. So we'll just do this. You can see that it's actually touching just a little. So we'll back it off just a, just a hair there. Now we're not touching, but you can see even even by just putting my fingers on the back edge of that blade very lightly, it begins to touch and turn that bearing. So as close as possible without it actually touching. We'll do the exact same thing up here at the top. But first, let's make sure we tighten. We've got our post tightened, but let's make sure that we tighten the guide to the post itself. So we'll snug that up. Then we'll adjust our thrust bearing, again, as close as we can get without it actually touching or turning that bearing. Rotate that wheel. Now, if I've done this the proper way, I should be able to touch right here in the center with as little as a fingernail. They should both turn, which they do. When I rotate the wheel, neither of them turn. So now we've got our... Uh, thrust bearing set up. Now the last thing that you want to do is adjust those side guides to the blade. Now again, even though they're bearings, you don't want them touching and turning constantly because if they do, they'll take the set out of the teeth. And I'm not talking about bringing the teeth between the bearings. What I'm talking about is any time that steel has been yielded, fancy word for being bent, every tooth has been set or bent. And if you put friction in the body of the blade, the tooth is going to want to come back to its original state. So by keeping the side guides from rubbing constantly, you will get a much longer life, and you don't have to have them so close anymore because we're using leverage, not force, to be able to get those blades to track properly. We'll do the same thing to the outside. Rotate that wheel one more time. Now, if both bearings are turning, you have it way too close because you're actually crushing the blade. Now, I've got just a little bit of movement at the top. Same thing down here at the bottom. You'll notice I always rotate the wheel. I don't touch the blade itself because if you touch the blade itself, you could deflect it and not really kind of know where it is in relation to those guides. So now we've got a little movement here, a little movement here. We've got our thrust bearing set. Our guides are installed. Let's reinstall our table and see what this thing will do. All right, now it's pretty easy to install the table on this particular saw. Just angle it. Take our two bolts or brackets. Snug that up. Do the same thing on the back. Now the back can be just a little trickier. And again, if you'll just pull down and twist that, it makes it a lot easier than trying to kind of stretch and 
and do each rotation by pulling down and going back. Put our table leveling bolt in. And we'll simply slide our fence bracket on. Slide our fence into place. All right, now in order to make sure your table is good and level, take a 2x. A 2x6 will give you more accuracy than this 2x4, but a 2 by has been joined on both sides, so it's relatively square. Ideally, want it to be as long as whatever your table is wide to get this absolutely right. Safety first. Bring our guides just above our work. Make a simple cut. Flip the wood over. Bring it around back. If the blade will go back into that cut, I know I'm level across the whole surface of the table, not just up one side or the other. Very easy way of making sure our table is good and square. Now next, I need to make sure that our fence is square to the body of the blade. Now the easiest way to do that is with a FAST. A FAST is a fence alignment system tool, which you can see has a magnet on one side with a groove, and the groove is for the offset of the teeth. You don't want to skew to the offset of the tooth. You want to go right to the body of the blade. So we'll just drop that right into place. We'll bring our fence right up to it, and I can see that it can be adjusted, or it, it is square to the body of the blade. If it does need to be adjusted on this particular fence, it has three Allen screws, which are number six, which you'll loosen and then it can be adjusted square to the body of the blade. So we know we're square. I'm going to set that fence for about a quarter of an inch. We'll raise this up. Make sure our doors are closed. And let's see how this goes. All right, now I've got a nice piece of maple here. We're going to see how this thing resaws. The blade that we're using is a 3 8 inch Greenwood blade by Carter Products, and that's all you have to have to resaw the full capacity that this saw can handle. Now when I get to the end, I don't like to use my thumb to push through, so I reach around and pull that right on out. Don't let anyone tell you that band saws have drift. You should never ever get any drift out of a blade, both top and bottom, dead on end to end. Now I hope this was helpful. And you're able to upgrade your saw to Carter Guides. I assure you, your blades will last a lot longer, and you'll do a lot less adjusting. Thanks for watching, everyone.